Hey everyone, David C. Anderson from the Knife Center coming at you from Blade Show 2022. We're here at the Artisan Cutlery booth to take a look at some new Artisan Cutleries and CJRB models with Russell. What's up, man? As always, our oh, good yeah. friend, who I'm sure you have a lot to talk about. You know, we actually kept the models a little more slim this year. Wanted to make sure we focus on a particular feature on a lot of these models, and as you've seen. We have some innovations that we've done, and we have a new product that we have never done before. I'm like, oh, that's that's cool, that's cool. Yeah, so, yeah. Why don't we start with the prototypes? Lead us right into it, sir. I'm gonna start with the CGRBs because we're really happy with the way these turned out. So let's start off with the big boy. This is the Lago. And this is our slightly larger sized button lock. One of our very first button lock models. Big old hole for flicking, nice flipper. Really comfy in the hands. Ah, this, this is, this is, it's really fidgety. It's yeah. really fidgety. No, the uh, the button lock action here, you guys nailed it. I mean, this is exactly what people are looking for. Uh, You've got that thing going on. As I flub it, let's I'll, okay. I'll do that again. Notice how we actually use a fairly substantially sized button on here. We actually made it a little bit larger than average. You would see on most button lock knives. I told them it's is like, that, hey, is that because of me? Slightly larger than average? Yeah, you know, slightly larger than average. <laughs> you know, it's gotta fit your hands. <laughs> but it really is meant to be kind of a more robust user. And with this blade profile, it's got a fairly thin profile, but I do love this. I I, I guess it's barely a sheep foot. Yeah, kind of, I'd probably call it a modified worn foot. We're, it, we're pointy enough. Like a sheep end. dagger, you know. Yeah. <laughs> sheep dagger point. But either way, this is probably my ideal version of a blade shape for work. This mm -hmm. is slicey with a tip. This is a cutter without being really like a beater. So mm -hmm. this is a work knife. And you notice in hand, again, a very rounded, comfortable handle in yeah. hand. You got that neutral shape, big hand, small hand. Big choil. No problem. So it's made for comfort. It's made to work well. It's made to be easy to function, but it is work oriented. So that is the Lago. So we've got G10 mm -hmm. uh, steel on this one, RPM9. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And, and if, you if you didn't hear, we're actually starting to move over some of our older models mm -hmm. to RPM9, kind of phasing out some of the G2, moving mm -hmm. it over because people are just like, ew, D2, bleh. But we, uh, since we do kind of make the RPM9 ourselves, we can kind of make a bigger batch and control the price. So it's like, hey, that's cool. So no intended price increase, just a changeover to a more stainless, tougher, and more interesting steel. Very cool. And the action on the button oh, lock, so you good. guys, like you're, you're giving people exactly what they want with the action uh, there. You've got both that of those. Sound too, that sound, yeah, that yeah. clink. But you've got that free floating nature as I flub it again, but that's okay, quite it's okay. All right. All right. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite nicely done. Reversible pocket clip, yep, which is cool because even lefties are gonna have no problem with that lock. We actually did a whole new pocket clip and kind of widen out the, the position of it a bit. So a wider pocket clip that's a little bit shorter, a little bit more broad. Again, a bit more working oriented. Something that's gonna stick a bit better in the pocket. We just kind of made this a bit more robust as a button lock and as kind of a, you know, it's meant to be used. Yeah. I'm really impressed with how we got this done because I wasn't sure what, how this is going to feel, and it does just feel very pleasant and very easy to work with in the hand. It does. It does. So yeah. Nicely done. All right. So number two, going on to a slightly different, more adhesive friendly knife. Uh, uh, this one's the one that's gotten the most attention so far. This is the Pyrite, again with the rocks. I'm kind of mm -hmm. running on rocks to name things after, but mm -hmm. very EDC oriented, super clean, super simple, really just straightforward design, kind of a half choil. Enough for a, you know, you're not doing a full grip. I can do a full grip, but uh, I got a feeling with you with your larger than average hands probably is, probably not gonna quite We'll work. do the test right here. Let's see. Yeah, not it's, even close. Let me see. A, even my pinky's a little too It's big a fingertip choil. But <laughs> with that, we have a nice kind of a blade that's a little bit lower than mm -hmm. average. So you get a bit more cutting surface and just in hand, it's comfortable. It's smooth. Yeah, ooh, that's even a little bouncy on this one, but it's just <laughs> this nice smooth action. Come on, stop bouncing. Don't do that. You're making me look bad. There we go. <laughs> no, that's, that is a great little shape. Sub three inch blade, yep. RPM nine again, slicey, drop point. The air goes though. Just the yeah. neutralness of this handle, single choil here, front choil, thumb studs, the back profile, and that really just clean drop point. This knife is almost a canvas for things. It's mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. perfectly done and just such a great, like the profile and pocket is just really neat and clean. And everyone's been picking this one up and just like, I just hear click, 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 click <laughs> all day because everyone just sits there and plays with it. And for a true deep carry to oh, the yeah. folks that really want this to, oh, yes. to, a knife to nestle in, you've got a little bit of height above the end of the handle there. So folks are going to appreciate that. I'm actually talking to our team about maybe doing a special tie clip for this one that actually maintains that deep carry, but mm -hmm. still has all the nice, like, you know, the mill tie feel mm -hmm. to it. So mm -hmm. we want to do a fancy upgrade. 
this would be really nice and it just mm, I, I love this one i really it's, do i, I do too yeah it's, it's hard solid. To, it's hard to say what specifically this does well except it really just hits all those points of i like this right <laughs> ah, so good also you notice this one is in steel and then we do the G10 version with the uh, slightly raised liners, so it actually has a much more thin feel in hand. Where the steel one, we may run the steel, we may not. We're gonna we're gonna see. But even the steel is actually surprisingly light. Here, let's just. Swap I do knives. I do like the steel version. Yeah. It's not. It, it doesn't fall into that trap that some steel handles yeah. do, where it is a, brick. Kind of a, a little bit of a brick or yeah. a boat anchor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah They're yeah. thin enough, and you've got it skeleton or milled out on the inside to take some of that weight out. There's actually quite a bit of milling on the inside of this one too. We just yeah. did a bunch of little triangles, and mm -hmm. this thing is quite light. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. I'm like it's it's getting towards a, a specific bench weight bottle territory. It's getting close. Getting close. Not quite there. It feels very good. I'm very impressed with uh, this one. So nice, so nice. All right, so that's the high right, and then moving onwards, one more, and we're going to the artisan side now. I uh, had a no lovely chat with Mr. Laconico this morning, who just or yesterday morning, who just flew in. And it's show. Time has no meaning. I did not even know we had this model until that day, and I'm just like, uh, Ray. So, uh, you know the night you sent us? I think we did it. How do you like button locks? He's like, yo, this is great. Like, so, this is the, and I, I cannot believe Ray just walked over and gave it this name. This is the Andromeda. And it is very Laconico. It's got that very clean shape to it. But mm -hmm. I like how this is a bit more, uh, a bit more pokey than any sure. Laconico model I've ever seen. And Ray is just ecstatic about this. It is something different not too different appeals to his crowd appeals to him he just he is enjoying it he's sitting there just flicking it and having a good time with it i i cannot i i love that blade shape like look at that look, look at that yeah. you're gonna have that narrow agile feel to ah. it love the handle you got contour milling on there titanium too. Yep, yep we might do this version in uh micarta and we might do the titanium version as well kind of like we did with the sirius mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. just gonna chat with ray see what he thinks about that sure and uh go from there but right now this is something that I did not even know was going to happen. Is <laughs> stellar. It is. And it, it really is a good showcase for a Andromeda. Button. Stellar. Andromeda. Stellar. Yeah. stellar. <laughs> uh, you got the jokes. You got the jokes, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> it works. It works well. That's a really nice design. It's so nice. It's got a little like the handle shape here. It's got a little bit of. There's something almost like a bone like it. There's it's, something like yeah, a like it's got bone that shape. bone character. I, I didn't even think that. I was yeah. thinking more something like old school slip joint stuff going on a little bit. Some of the weird like fishtail stuff. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Mermaid tail, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. I love it. I cannot believe that name was not taken. It's like, ah, really? Don't say it too loudly. Yeah, I know. Like, hey, I have that name. Very nice. So good. All right, so let's move on to the two uh, slightly experimental pieces that we have going on. So. Uh, this one, I think we showed you at SHOT Show. We saw some really rough prototypes yeah, back then. Yep. It's still a little rough, Okay. but we got some more detail on it. So we got a name for it. It's called the Rack, the R-A-K, Rail Action Knife. Okay. Uh, I love that one of our guys over here is coined the term. It's a uh, ITF and in the front. <laughs> so if you saw the original one, it was very blocky. It's still real blocky. But a little bit less. It's a, it's a whole Snickers bar. But we did add some few, a few things on here. We have this nice G10 inlay here, which adds a bit of grip. And we did kind of contour the slide on here to make it a bit more grippy. So still the same thing. Push the button up, rack the slide. Yeah, that sound. Ooh. And that opens the knife, press the button to retract it. Or you can, and this one doesn't even do it as well as the old one, but you can do this. But we've added something in here to add a distinctive detent. Okay. We are working on dialing that in to make it more effective because you shouldn't be able to, and I'm, I'm like, oh, this may not go well. You should not be able to just shake it out. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take too much at this point after everyone's been playing with it. So oh, yeah. Still a prototype, We got folks. some work to do on this one. But uh, I love the fact that this knife on our Instagram is like the most polarizing thing ever. I have so many comments being like, oh my God, that's so cool. And what the hell, that is the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. You should stop making knives. I'm like, dude, harsh. But... You gotta, as I've been saying to everyone who comes here, is like, what is it? Why are you doing this? It's like, you gotta rock the boat sometimes and make things happen. No one's ever made an in the front knife. No one's ever made a slide action knife. And honestly, we refine this, and as this gets towards completion, this is gonna be really cool. The sound and the action, the, the a level of just like satisfaction of this is something else. And mm -hmm. I'm very excited to see where this goes. And when we get this final version done, I am very stoked to see how much rage happens online when something that's this wild comes out and actually does that be really good. So 
That is the rack in its current iteration, the RIK Rail Action Knight. First in the front ever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that one, uh, still working on it. No, no real timeline on it, but we shall see. And that's going to be one of the American-made products. And Actually, we're still, aiming or? to have that made overseas okay. because with all these modifications and specifications, this will actually, and uh, I have talked to enough people about this, this might actually be UK and US legal because it does fill all the all the qualifications of not being a gravity knife, not being an automatic, technically, and not having anything that will make it modifiable to those specifications. Interesting. Okay. But you can still one hand flick it out. You just have to overcome a detent. You can still, you know, it's out the front. So if you have something that can maybe snag on the pocket and deploy it, we'll see. Okay. I kind of want to put a, like a Picatinny rail on there. So you have like a little like rail system <laughs> on there, maybe. But again, we're thinking about it. Well, anyway. It's cool to see the development uh, for, between six months ago and now. Ooh. Cool to see uh, what's coming next. Too. I know, right? And then, and then, oh boy. <laughs> First time ever doing this. The tentative name of this one is the Nebulax, designed by Mr. Joe Flowers, who, of course, Joe Flowers wanted to make an axe for us. And why wouldn't you? You know, I, that is a good question. <laughs> this is kind of a slightly longer than average camp axe, meant for, uh, we shall say, a bushcraft enthusiast for another bushcraft enthusiast, and it is uh, a very nicely done piece. I'm quite impressed with how we were able to get this done. It's got a little hammer piece on the back end. Uh, the little, little bit, yeah. The little cutout there is meant to be an index point. You're doing, um, I'm not sure what Joe would call it, but if you're shaving close in, like Stuff so, like this, perhaps. we might want to extend a little bit. Handle's got some great jipping, and a, I believe there's a little bit of a cutout there to balance it out right towards the choke point right there. There is that little bit of a choil there, so you get your finger in there. We're going to make that choil a little bit longer, a little bit farther down, a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. But right now, it is just a really freaking cool looking small axe. And... Um, I'm really impressed with how we got this done because it was something that we just were like, hey, Joe, can you make an axe? And he's like, can you guys make an axe? And we're like, sure. <laughs> okay, sure. And I'm like, all right, fine. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll and see then you're like, oh, oh, shoot, now we have to figure out yeah. how to make an axe. Yeah, and then they sent me a message a couple days ago saying, hey, uh, go check the front desk of the hotel. We just shipped these over a week ago and we hope it's going to get there in time. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> Pull this out. I'm like, nice. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, Mr. Flowers. You got something going on here. We managed to get this done pretty well. So Material for the steel in this case? We're actually still figuring it out. So the current prototype is in just a base steel so we can get the shape. We are debating if we want to do 1095. Maybe we want to see about uh, doing a different heat treat on the RPM9 to see if we can take a different edge and maintain toughness. Or you might just do 3V. Because why not? Because why not? Because why the heck not? Why the heck wouldn't you? But uh, That would be a massive uh, massive piece of 3V that right there. That would be a big piece of 3V. <laughs> so we'll see how it works out. <laughs> but uh, tentative name is the Nebulax. I'm pretty sure no one's got that one, but I'm like, all right, Joe. That's uh, <laughs> okay. But uh, I, kinda, I, I do kind of like the name. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah play yeah. with it, play with it. Good little camper. Hunters probably like do the little bone splitting thing yeah. with something like this. We were at the pit last oh, yeah. night. And I, I, I can't say I ever regret giving it to Joe at the pit, but I think he scared everyone around him. He's like, oh my God, I want to use this on something. We're like, Joe, not the chairs. We're, we're, yeah, well, the chairs are safe. <laughs> like Jared, All the plant life is Joe, don't go inside. Packs. Don't go for the tree outside. No, don't, don't, break, don't break the counter. I do know Joe has set a fire on the strip in Las Vegas I before. have seen it. I, yeah. yeah. Next up. All right. So now I have some currently released models. These all came out very recently. Is it within a month? So let's start on the CGRB again. We have the Caldera. You probably saw the prototype over at SHOT Show. We've mm -hmm. done some modifications to this one. We've widened the choil a bit here. We've gave this a full choil up top. We've extended the jimping. We've made sure this area up here is a bit more accessible. And this is really our take on a folding Skinner. Skinner, also, you yeah. say. Also, I love the fact the hole still works, but just the profile of this is very thin and the edge on this is super, super trim. It is really thin behind the edge. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice knife. It does have a lot of character. It is kind of a modification of the Tigris. Uh, actually, the same one of our same in-house designers is the guy who worked on this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We also did a whole can, different. You clip can definitely on it. see the uh, yeah. the influence there. It's that split G10 that actually I think I look really dramatic. We do this one in red with. Uh, we also have a satin finish one, but like mm -hmm. the red and black of the black blade is like really dramatic. It always looks good, yeah. But it's a really cool knife and it cuts really well. Um, I like the index point there. It kind of reminds me of what we were saying yeah. about this model at the front. Work knife, work yeah. yeah, just a, a straight up worker without being a tank. Yeah, and the whole you thing still is, have slicing efficiency. It's, going on. it's got chunk, but it does have a little bit of a good reduction to the stock of it to make it a really good user. And that's kind of the data we got from the Tigris, which was just a absolute chunk of a knife 
but people really liked because the blade stock was relatively thin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that thin, but it was relatively thin compared to a lot of other bigger cleaver knives. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is almost a slicer because it's so tall. And we're like, hmm. Yes, indeed. Slicer, you say. <laughs> so it's a chunky knife, but it's got a just trim, trim blade. So that is the Caldera that is available now. Next one. This one came out like just about two weeks ago. Just got released. This is the Ruffian designed by Dirk Pinkerton. Mm -hmm. This was one of my favorite knives at SHOT Show. And we got this one out. We have a black handle, black blade, satin blade, or the purple, which I'm like, okay, I like this. Digging the purple. I, I okay. dig it. This is such a good general EDC. If you like Warren Cliffs, if you're looking for a, a box cutter, you're looking for an office knife, this is a slick knife. I love that it is just three inches. It fills the hand. It is surprisingly thin. Mm -hmm. And it's actually our first knife we did with four position carry. We actually brought the, the tab area for this uh, clip down just a hair mm -hmm. so that it doesn't you know rub on the fingers. It's just a little tiny bit. Sure. We changed a, the profile a little bit. We, we did not dip the scales. We actually just kept them flat mm -hmm. and kept the texture on the G10. Mm -hmm. So it fills the hand a little bit better. And of course, that blade shape did not need any altering. Dirk Pinkerton is a gosh darn master of the Warren Cliff. And with the way this is set up, I have actually been carrying the prototype for, I think, since SHOT Show. It has been my companion in the office because it's the best box cutter mm -hmm. and best mm -hmm. general user I think I've run into in a long time for something that is under, that is a three inch knife. Mm -hmm. On yeah, top got, of that- You got that completely straight edge yeah. there. With Very that slight cant point. to it. It's got yeah. a slight cant, so if you're cutting down on a surface, I found it actually adds a bit more utility because you're doing something and you're like bending over to cut a box. You don't have to do like a straight. Gives straight you a little more clearance. There's a little bit more yeah. clearance and a bit more cutting power, mm -hmm. just off the natural motion of the cut. Mm -hmm. So we're really happy with this, but we're so happy that we actually did a Blade Show Special Edition. This one is with S35, black DVD, black micarta. This really nice grip mm -hmm. from micarta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thai pivot collar and a Thai clip. So just a stepped up version. And I just gotta feel how grippy that is in hand. It's so good. It's quite nice. Micarta oh. always adds a nice oh. feel. I really like the, the kind of crenellations or whatever we want to call this detailing mm -hmm. here on the spine there. It's, it's, how it's not Dirk, quite jimping, but it's, it's how Dirk cool. does his jimping. He does yeah. this kind of like outside jimping for, for the, the spine of the knife and this inside jimping for the inside of the knife. And yeah, it's yeah. like, it's, 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 Imping and jimping, I guess. <laughs> or jimping but and jout. I don't know. Something like it. Jimping, jimping and jiving. Yeah, man. But it's it's a really cool knife. And for its size, it really does feel very comfortable in the pocket. Again, because it's got very straight sides. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I'm actually doing, so to pull out the Proto. Back pocket carry? Yes. I'm doing a, I switch my clip to the left side because this sits a flush to the right side of the pocket. Mm -hmm. But because this is a straight back, it's really comfy in the pocket. It doesn't interrupt anything. There's no real lines or points or anything. And it just sits comes out, pops open, cut the box, close it up, back, back in the pocket, up. and I don't have to be worried about it. You know, I'm not carrying it with a blade out where if it does this in the pocket, not a fan. Right. I like it to be secure, but if I decide to change that, I can do a tip down mm -hmm. and just do this so I can draw it quicker and yeah. do a more tactical draw. Yeah. And that's one thing I do enjoy about this is it is a slightly tactical model. Mm -hmm. um, consider that, sure. As someone who likes a lot of things that are kind of worn clipping, kind of tactical, this does work as that. Mm -hmm. I will not put my knife fighting skills to the test, but I do kind of like the fact that it's got a good point and a very accessible blade that can kind of do a really short cut. Mm -hmm. And I find that knives like this, I'm attracted to for those applications and sure. that is what I've been trained in. Sure. So it's kind of fits, a, it hits a lot of points that I think just are very ideal for a general carry knife. Sure. So yeah, so that's the Ruffian. The standard is, is available now mm -hmm. and the special edition blade show one will be available other places depending <laughs> on where they show up. Right. All right. So. One more and just recently released. I do not have a standard version of this, but I do have the dressiest version of this knife. This is by our good buddy, Dylan Mallory. This is the Tylos after the Tylosaur. Mm -hmm. And this one, again, we had this at SHOT Show. The modification we did to this one needed no modification stuff to kind of clean up the blade profile, make it nice and kind of spear pointy. This is our Blade Show Special Edition, tied to massive tip of collar. Tide Masters Clip, Gold Flake Carbon Fiber, DLC Coated Blade. This thing is very, very sexy. That finish on the blade oh, is- Oh, it's so good. Eye-catching. 
There you go. Flubbing a front flipper again. I, I saw nothing. On camera. Sorry, I folks. will say the way that we lined up the front flipper in this one is meant to be at a 90 degree angle. It's mm -hmm. meant to keep the profile clean in pockets. So you don't have the front flipper sticking up. Mm -hmm. It also allows with the DJ position to make that hole really accessible for middle finger flicking and rolling. And that's quite the, uh, the length on that hole. It makes that yes. very easy. But look at the ratio of the blade to the handle. This is one thing I love about Dylan's designs. Mm -hmm. and I feel like they are always moving forward because there's always a lot of blade, a lot of points, for very trim handles that still feel very comfortable in the hand. And this mm. is about as maximized as possible. Because yeah. that handle is actually fairly small. Yeah. And that blade is pretty big. Yeah, definitely kind of maximize is the word you use, right? Yeah. Works well. But See, I was going to say that that kind of shiny DLC finish is just so we, cool. We did a few DLC models. We don't do a lot because it really is a bit of a pain. Because if you notice, you can actually see the grind lines in that because it's a very fine corundum DLC. Yeah. It's nice and shiny. It's almost like it's almost like a polish on top, but it's so pretty. So I'm really happy about that. And hopefully we'll be doing more. But every time I talk to our, our, our factory, we'll be like, oh God, we don't want to do any more. It's just pain. <laughs> it's like just, just we'll do like five knives when we're done. On just the right yeah, stuff. Like just, yeah, like yeah. just it's only going on the fancy things, and that's it. We're not doing any more. It's too much trouble. But look, very like, nice. The tied Damascus. With the gold flake, the shiny black, and I'm just like, ah, that is hot, <laughs> dang. But the standard version of this knife is available now, and it is still equally hot because it has marble carbon fiber, and we do it in a, I believe, a black or a satin finish. Also, notice this is a bolster lock. Mm -hmm. So though, for those of you with bigger, biggish hands and slightly larger than average palms and fingers, you don't have to worry as much about having your fingers get in the way of the lock face. Sure. And with a, a handle that thin, that can be a problem. Yeah. So we yeah. just did like, hey, bolster lock, boom. Done and done. Yeah, very nice, and got that fancy side, but it's still such a useful so design good. overall. So good, yeah. Dylan. Dylan knows his stuff. I he's he's sitting over there chatting away, but oh <laughs> man, that, that that man knows his stuff. Very very nicely done. Well, that is all we've got time for yep. right now. Uh, make sure to check out the links in the description. We'll point you over to our artisan and CJRB pages as this stuff becomes available. That's where you will find it. Make sure to keep an eye out on our, two, our Thursday videos where we show the new knives and of course our social media pages and keep sticking around here for more great Blade Show coverage. Russell, thank Dude, you so very much. It's always great, man.